Good afternoon guys. How are you today? I hope your week's been fantastic. I can't believe it's Friday already, that's for sure. Hey, I'm getting ready actually for afternoon tea today and I thought I'd show you this bread recipe. I've never made it before um, and I think it's convertible to gluten-free quite easily. So I'm going to show you how to do that today and uh, I'll give you a report back on whether it worked or not. But I think it will, it's actually based on self-raising flour, not on bread flour. So I think we've got an easy swap here. Do say hi if you're watching. I'd love to know you're watching. Love to know you're enjoying these videos. And of course, hashtag replay when you're watching the replays. And let us know what you're having for dinner. Let's inspire each other. Uh, it's been a big week to, um, to, you know, with recipe suggestions for dinner tonight. So let us know what you're making and hopefully that will inspire somebody else to make it as well. All right, so pull apart sunshine bread. Let's get cooking straight away. So it says preheat the oven and then it says grease a bunk tin. I've got my awesome one from the mix shop. I really do like these bun this bunk tin. So far, huge success with it not sticking, but I have greased it this time just in case because, I don't know, just did. So watch this space. Set the bunk tin aside. Okay, first things first is some cheese. It says cheddar. I've just got good old tasty cheese. In it goes, 150 grams, 153, perfect. Then I want some bacon rashers. Now I don't have uh, any bacon out, but I actually have ham that really needs using. So I'm gonna put my uh, ham, it's gonna be more than 100 grams in, 180. Oh well, it really needs eating. I think we bought it last week when we were away camping. So it needs eating. So fr fresh parsley. So we grow this in the garden so it can just go straight in. And if you don't have fresh, of course, just use your dried parsley, okay? We'll work the same. And then on with the lid. So now we're going to chop this down and then we're going to put it aside. So five seconds, speed seven. Let's give that a spin up. I think I just realized I've forgotten to bring the butter in. So I might have to go dash out and grab that in a second. It's going to ask us now to place half the mixture on a plate and set aside. I just love how quickly the Thermomix chops. Look at that. Perfect chop. So half of that aside. Now I'm sure I saw butter in the recipe and I'm sure I haven't got the butter out. I always say to you guys at demos how awesome it is you can kind of just do it as it tells you to do it. But then when I'm at home and trying to be all I've got to get all that to start off with. Okay. Let's just see. It'll tell me when I need the butter, if I need the butter. Okay, 350 grams of self-raising. Now, I don't have self-raising. I've just got ordinary plain flour. So I'm going to put in about 340 grams, and then I'm going to put a teaspoon of baking powder per 100 grams. So I've got 300 grams in there. It'll be at least three teaspoons of flour, of baking powder to self-raising it. That turns it into self-raising flour. Okay. Nearly there. So I'll go about here. What's that? 339, 340. And then I want a teaspoon per 100 grams. So I just want probably just over um, three teaspoons. Don't get too particular with it, okay? But on the same token, don't go crazy overboard. Um, it will leave a funny taste in your cooking. I don't know if you've ever done that where you've misread a recipe. I'm renowned for it when I'm tired, is putting in tablespoons instead of teaspoons. And it does take on a certain flavor, even uh, bicarbo soda as well. Bicarbo soda will give you a weird flavor in your, your ingredient, in your recipe, if you've gone a little heavy. Well, not a little heavy, a lot heavy, okay? All right, there we go. Up to weight on that. Yeah, butter. Hang on, guys. Let me grab the butter out of the fridge. So it says softened butter. Obviously mine's not going to be softened because I've literally just taken it out of the fridge. So what you do is you just dice it a little smaller than usual. Okay, that's just a little tip for you guys. I don't know about you, but I never ever remember to get anything out of the fridge beforehand. Oh well, okay. I do if I'm doing Facebook Lives. When I'm cooking normally in my kitchen, it's on the fly. It says butter, I go get it out of the, the fridge. Like that's the beauty of the Thermomix cooking, right? So, and look at that, it's actually not much butter at all. 50 grams of butter. There we go. Perfect. So I just kept them small, all right, to allow for it to the fact that it's not not soft. Now instead of sea salt, I'm actually going to put my stock in. Let me grab a spoon. And it says half a teaspoon. So I can actually go normally four times that amount. So I could put in two teaspoons of it. 
It is our saltiness to our recipe, our flavour enhancer. If you haven't made your veggie stock, get onto it. And if you need a hand, contact me. I'd love to help you get started with your Thermomix. Some pepper. I had it here. Here it is. Okay. And then on with the lid. And it's now going to combine these ingredients for us. Four seconds speed. Time. All right. How quick is that? I love how fast the Thermomix works. 200 grams of milk. Now, I'm going to, I've used gluten-free flour, which performs differently to normal flour, all right? It, it, depending on brand, it can also be very different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start light. I'm actually gonna just put 150 grams of milk in and see how that goes, all right? Because it is one of those things that every brand of gluten-free, a little different on how it absorbs in. So I'm gonna try and stop early. It's easier to add more milk later than it is to wish you didn't add as much and it'd be really, really tacky. Let's see how we go. Okay, 15 seconds speed four. So time to put your ingredients away. Awesome. All right, next. Place the dough onto a silicon bread mat and shape into a ball. Let's just have a look at our texture first before we do that. Because I was 50 grams short, so I was two and a half tablespoons short. So just let me scrape this down. I am going to add the extra into it. Let me just show you what this looks like, and then I can kind of explain what, how I know. See how it's still just too crumbly? What we're looking for is more like cauliflower florets, where it's coming together. Pardon, you want to see what it looks like? There you go. All right, I'm doing a video. Can you come back in a moment? So I'm just going to bring my scales up and I'm going to add that extra 50 grams. All right, 53 grams. Let's hit the back arrow. Let's do that combined step again. It probably won't take the full 15 seconds, but I'll kind of listen and I'll hear when it's done. I love the fact that you can hear the little come together really nicely. I was looking for a bread mat to do this on because I forgot to bring a bread mat in. I might use my chopping board. Okay, next. Place the dough onto a bread mat and shape into a ball. Now let me show you now what's going on in here. See how it's come together? That's what we want. So that's awesome. What I'm going to do, I am using, so I wouldn't usually preference a chopping board over a bread mat. But I didn't bring one in with me. So I'm just going to flour up my mat and my chopping board. But if you guys got a thermo mat or the new oven tray liners or um, um, the the oven one or the thermo mat, I would highly suggest doing it on those. Far cleaner than what I'm going to experience here. And if you haven't bought them, uh, you can get a pack with the oven mat and the bread mat uh, for having a demo, which is pretty cool. Oh no, and I'm dropping it everywhere. <sighs> Confined space, the joys. All right. All of that's now out. Now it's going to roll into a log about 30 centimetres long. Just let me grab the chunk. One chunk escaped. So it's actually quite workable, even though it's gluten-free, which is awesome. You guys can just see that coming together. And it wants us to shape it into a log. Bear in your mind it's got cheese and butter in there, so you don't want to be too long doing this because your hands are going to start releasing the oil out of the, the bread, out of the cheese and the butter. All right, so I'm just rolling it around on that um, lightly, trying to spread that to about 30 centimeters long. Because now, I think if I understand correctly, so that's what it looks like now. Quite easy to work with, which is amazing. Cut log into 10 pieces. Oh my goodness. All right, let's do this. Lucky I put it on the chopping board. Now, if you're chopping on your thermo mat or your oven mat, Please be careful, you do not want to use something sharp. It will chop through your silicon mat, so please be really careful. Okay, how does one do 10 pieces about right? There we go, that's it, all right. So it says 10 pieces, kind of reminds me of scone mixture. It's got that feel to it. Okay. 
and the, even that sponginess of a scone. It smells beautiful though. All right, so I've got that done. Press one cut surface of each piece of dough into the reserve cheese mixture and place cheese side up, side by side onto the prepared baking tray in a baking tray. In a circle, sprinkle with excess cheese mixture and bake. Okay, so I think what that means, so the, the uh, exposed side, so dip it in your leftovers, I think is what it's asking for. I'm going to dip both sides because why not? So dip both sides and then I think it's telling you to layer it in here. Okay, so I'm just going to layer it like that, push it to the sides and then I'm going to get the next one. So in it goes both sides make sure you're using a decent amount of ham and cheese and push it to the side which is also probably why you wanted to oil the side well because it's going to have that beautiful um, cheese sticking out at you otherwise so here we go look I'm just putting them around the edges look that one fell in that's all right I'll fix him up in a moment okay back out there Okay, so by the way guys, while I'm doing this, let me just remind you, you said this weekend is the last weekend of our bowl offer for $99 when you host a demonstration and your friend is ready to buy. So if you would like to organize a demo with me over the next couple of days, please reach out. I do have some virtual time slots available. So then you and your friends can actually watch on um, instead of me coming to your place and um, get you a bowl set and then a Thermomix. And for them, if they're buying a Thermomix this month, they're getting a, a blade cover and a oval thermosever for $39, which is a fantastic deal. You guys know that the blade cover is generally $35. So to be able to get the um, thermosever, in essence, for $4, it's awesome, okay? So I'm so stoked with that offer. Thank you, Thermomix, for our birthday celebrations and giving us some awesome progress. All right, I'm just pushing these in. I'm nearly done. Just need to fit two more in. I think this is going to be really yummy. It smells absolutely amazing. And I'm excited to see how the gluten-free works out. Okay. Most things, it's a good swap. But anytime that it's got bread in the, the uh, title, I kind of go, oh, how's this going to go? Now, it did say to pour the leftovers over the top. I'm actually not going to have any leftovers. So whether I left too much in the dough or whether, I don't know, that's just how it is, I guess. So... In they go. I don't know if that's how they meant it to be done, but that's how I'm going to do it. Not too sure. Just go back a step. Press one cut surface of dough into the reserved cheese and place a cheese side up, side by side into the tray into a circle. I don't know what they're asking for, but I'm going to do it like that. Okay, <laughs> so we'll just, just go with that. And then we're going to cook it for 25 minutes until golden brown. And then we're going to serve it warm. They look like they've done theirs around and round and round. Hang on. I reckon I can change this. I don't think I've killed it too much yet to do it what they maybe are asking to do. Hello, Carissa. Hello, Sharon. Facebook have gone and changed where the comments are on the page, and I keep looking for them in the wrong spot. So I do apologize for my lateness at saying hello. Um, I haven't quite adjusted to seeing them in a different place to where they would normally be in my screen. I think they did the change when I was away as well, which made it a little even harder to kind of adapt to the change. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm placing them side by side instead. Kind of like theirs, where it's that floret look. I have no idea what I'm doing. And you guys know, fancy's not my thing. It's just about feeding my family. <laughs> so, you know, not a fancy girl at this household. All right, let me see if I can squeeze the last one in. What am I doing wrong here? This one does not want to fit. All right, here we go. Hello, Kelly. Lovely to have you on this afternoon. All right, there we go. We've made it. That's probably what they're after. I'll take a photo at the end, shall I, and show you guys what it looks like. Um, and I'll let you know if the gluten-free flour works. If it doesn't, we never throw things out. We recycle and reuse it. So I will let you know how it goes and if it doesn't work. Now, a little FYI, for those of you who watched the fig and walnut loaf the other day, they didn't work out so fabulous with the gluten-free flour in instead. They were quite dense. I've used them though for a few different things. So I've actually used them on yogurt. So I grated them up in the Thermomix. So I put them in and blitzed into breadcrumbs. Used it over yogurt. Kids thought it was amazing. I made custard and I sliced it up and toasted them that night. 
And oh, by the way, when they were fresh, kids ate them. It wasn't an issue. This is the leftovers. Um, because when they were fresh, they were warm and soft. It was as they cooled, they weren't like like hot crust bun bread or like banana bread. They didn't have that, especially not when they were cold. So never let anything go to waste, all right, with your Thermomix. And I need to go back and put that comment on that recipe as well. So don't try that because it's actually a bread. It's got yeast in it, so it needs that gluten. And I did wonder that, but I was willing to give it a go anyway. All right, I'm going to get this in the oven. It needs to cook for a little while, 25 minutes maybe 30. I'm looking at it thinking I feel like it's going to need longer, but I'll let you know on that as well. Have a fantastic afternoon, guys. Let me know if I can help you in any way with the Thermomix or your, the people around you, your loved ones, your friends and family. I'd love to help them get a Thermomix on the bench and uh, change their kitchen because it really does transform what you do and what you want to do in your kitchen. Otherwise, guys, take care this afternoon. I will see you back here at the latest Monday, maybe over the weekend. I have quite a few demos with this bowl offer at the moment. So, Watch this space. If I get a chance, I will certainly come to you Saturday and Sunday, but definitely Monday. Um, and Zach Biscuits on Monday. So I'll see you then. Bye, guys.